there we have it. So let's crack it open. Um, it looks like it was opened uh, opened by customs. So um, sometimes I never know quite how to open his boxes. His boxes always fit. They are the tightest boxes I've ever played with. All right, there's that. So this is his new carry case. It reminds me a lot of the uh, mini case. In fact, I'll show you. So that's the mini. So very similar uh, material design everything okay nothing in there all right you ready oh. all right okay. what do we got in here so there's like little little pouches I don't know if they'll all come like this but um, okay, there's the feet. Little, little terry cloth bags. Well, hopefully they come with them. I kind of like these little bags. All right. I have no idea though. Okay. So there's a wrench. Now again, keep in mind, this is a beta I mean, it's it's pretty close to a release beta. I will say that from what he's told me. Um, you know, clearly he's been playing with it because it's dirty. Uh, so what do we got? We got some ears. Looks like these are probably... There's two different ways you can set up the front. Um, two different set of, of ears. Uh, but I do like this. It has his seatbelt material on it. And then there's a little knurled Allen key here. And then we have the three feet, which have some kind of a lock. I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work, but I guess I'm going to figure it out. Okay. And it looks like we've got... So that's going to be the adjustment uh, for the elevation. It's got the Allen head on it. And this has his same knurled coupling system on it there. It's got a it's got an angle to it, so I'll have to play with that. But you can see, it's not a straight it's not a straight shot. So if I have it like this, you can see it's it's got some angle to it. And then he's got it's like an anodized. It's got the X on the end. It's got an anodized. It almost looks like a honey dipper, like what you would use to to pull honey out of a jar. Um, but it's definitely got some grip to it. I'm curious to see what that feels like playing with it. All right. Now, I don't have instructions for this, so I'm guessing how this goes together. I've sort of watched a video, but it wasn't even like a full video. Uh, I don't know if that goes, if I keep that or not. Uh, that's just the carry handle. All right. So you can... You can carry it. All right, I'm going to leave that off just so you can see a little better. Okay, so then we've got... Let's raise this up so I can see the feet here. All right, so there are... Uh, down below here, there are two legs on that side and one on this side. I'm guessing this is a release. Yeah, so this is spring-loaded right here, and I'll use this just to show you. So that releases the leg. 
and then it detents in. I mean, it, it locks in there. And then let's see this side here. So same thing. So there's two spring-loaded releases. Those are gonna come out. He's got a big level on the bottom, which I like. He's got a couple little ones up here as well. Um, I am not a huge fan, like on my Mini, I actually run my Mini with the head facing away so that the level is, is easily view, viewed for me and not underneath the, actual, um, underneath the actual piece here. And then, let's see, we've got adjustable ears and these have a Teflon pad. And for F-Class, you don't actually have to have side bags that are compressible. It's only, this only has to be deformable, which it is. But it's definitely a lot smaller. It's still his seatbelt material. So here's, here's that bag. So you simply unscrew this, which I'm not going to do right now, but there is sand in here, so this is compressible. And then it's just got these two uh, seatbelt ears, so that's cool. I actually like the simplicity and I like the weight savings as a, you know, like for somebody that travels, um, having the weight not in the, the bags here is, is huge. Um, these are just very lightweight plastic uh, with a, like a Delrin or Teflon or something uh, pad. So compared to having this in there, which you could put this in if you wanted, um, so you would replace, let's see, so I'm guessing you would replace this on both sides and then you could have uh, sand on the side if you wanted to. But I am definitely gonna shoot it with the Teflon. Right now I shoot, um, I don't shoot with side bags on my Mini, and so I'm used to doing this. And these look like they go over the bag real nicely, but then they capture it. So this piece right here, so it goes under, but then it retains on the side, so. I'm just gonna have to, when I get to the range, I'll set this up for my stock width, but that's easy enough. Um, it looks like, so there's a little bit of, let me see here. So with the, with the Teflon, there's a little bit of pressure that can be applied when you tighten this. It's not like the sandbags where it, you know, kind of cams over, but it does move it uh, probably a solid 16th of an inch. So you probably get an eighth of an inch total between the two. But with something like the Teflon, typically when you're using hard bags like this, you're not compressing it hard. You're just going to do a light touch or somebody's, um, what they'll do is they'll just take a, like a business card or a piece of paper, push it up against the stock, tighten it down, and then pull the paper out. I tend to push mine right up against it and then tighten it, and that still gives me enough travel with my Mini. We'll see how this one works out. And then, um, you know, as you may or may not have seen with my um, with my mini, I don't run a front forend stop. My forend stop is actually built into my stock, so it stops here. Uh, I'm going to keep this on for now, obviously, uh, but uh, I don't know how I'll run it. Um, I'm going to try it for our weight savings. I usually take off these front forend stops, and um, it doesn't look like it'd be too tough to take off. It's milled into the the base, so you're only removing the actual hinge part. Just looks like an Allen head that comes out. So, okay. So then if we play with this, we're going to tighten that down. Okay. Let me see here. So this goes up and down. Okay. So we have, we have the ability to articulate it up or down. And what's nice is if you want to run this one leg in the back, for instance, he still has the ability to flip it back and forth, which is really nice. Because there's some people who like running one leg back. Some people, you know, depending on the discipline, things like that, it definitely could have an impact. And this will completely spin around. You can shoot it both ways, it looks like. So if I didn't have this on, let's just verify that. So... So I can spin that whole thing around if I wanted to and shoot it the other direction. All right, so this is gonna go, that's gonna adjust my up and down. This, oh, okay. So here's what we're looking at. These are the lock, the lockdown for the elevation on the side. 
and I think I just found that so that locks the head too so if I have my gun in here right and I loosen this then I can turn you know I can get this lined up exactly where I want and then lock it down so that it stays rigid but is easily swivelable swivelable well whatever uh, if I need to get on target a little better or change targets or something but then that locks down so that's kind of a cool feature and it looks like like a lot of guys like on my Neo I would always leave this one pretty loose and I would only tighten the left side and it looks like that still gives you the ability so I can um, I can tighten that down let's see here Let's see what that looks like. Maybe not. Okay, so that locks that locks that. So is this only the swivel? Okay. All right. So you can actually do whatever you want. Okay. So here's what we've got. This one adjusts your elevation. So this will lock down your elevation for you. And then you could either run it. If you wanted to, you could leave this open. And just run it so that it's, it's swiveling while you shoot. Uh, kind of like some other rests. Or you can lock it down once you're in position. So it gives you a lot of versatility. And uh, it's obviously tensioned properly. So if I loosen this up all the way. Uh, I mean I can't push down on it. But this will easily come down now. Uh, because of the way the gear drive works on this. So it's not going to fall on you or anything like that. So that's pretty sweet. Okay, so let's lock this down. Let me see what this feels like with the joystick now. So I'm going to lock this down. I'm going to lock that down. The other thing I really like about this is that you don't have to have this control, right? So if you forget it at home or, you know, whatever, you lose it, everything can still be done just by hand. So you've got hand, hand lever, hand lever, and hand levers. Um, so that is, I, I like that feature. Uh, because it's not always convenient. It's not always something where you're going to have this. So there's times, you know, I've left, I've literally left um, my adjustment stick for other rests uh, at a hotel one time. And, you know, because I was cleaning and it came out and I forgot. And I was really in a, in a bind being able to adjust it. I had to pull out a tool kit and, and use it. So I do like that he has these levers built into it. So that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so let's do that, let's do that, and let's see how this feels. Now, I don't know, I haven't talked to him yet about what's inside of this head, but I'm going to say, just based on what I'm seeing, I'm seeing a Teflon pad on the front, just barely inside, because I know where to look for, these, for them in here. Um, very smooth, though, and there is an adjustment to, to tighten that up a little bit if I wanted to. I'm guessing that's this one. Yeah. So, so see how, see how that's loose, tighter. So you can really set your, your adjustment wherever you want. And, you know, technically there is a way that you can put your rest on here and, and get it so that, um, it's exactly what you want in terms of the tension. So there's tension on the back side, tension on the front side. And it does feel very smooth, so I do like that. Uh, Color-wise, I don't know what the options are going to be. Obviously, the whole rest is black, and then you can see that the head itself is orange there. Um, I have heard that there's a blue one being tested as well, uh, but I don't know what other color options are going to be available. So, Okay, let's play with the feet, because I think that's going to be a really interesting um, feature on here. Oh, so this comes off. You can... So this is nice. Uh, okay, so I wasn't expecting this. I, I wasn't expecting it to be removable. So on the minis uh, and and his other rests. And let me see if I have mine handy here. So this is what a mini handle looks like. And now I I just his other ball is epoxyed on. It's a black ball, um, and I don't know. I like color, so I knocked off his ball and shoved a, a golf ball on. And I've got. You know, I've got all different balls that I can stick on the shaft here. And I just happen to like running my minis a blue. And I think the blue and pink looks good. So that's just me. But uh, it looks like if you were so inclined, you could machine or find something different. You know, there's some people that like a lever. Uh, some people like bigger balls, small balls, um, oblong. 
I mean, whatever you wanted, you could definitely machine something. So I do like that. That's pretty cool. All right, let's see what these feet do. So I think I see what happens now. So see these clips right here? Um, so you still have a foot, and the foot feels... Okay, so there is a tension screw. So you could remove these feet and replace them with something else. But it looks like the feet are going to just snap right in. As long as I'm not a complete idiot here. Let's see. Okay. So there's that. And then you just tighten that. And you're good to go. So that is fantastic. Um, I think every rest ever made, you had to thread everything down in and then thread everything out if you wanted to remove it. So being able to simply pull this out and then put this in, it does look like you do have to make sure, of course, that you're using this to lock it down so that it doesn't come out. Because if it's up, it could slide out on you. So make sure that that is tight once you have your elevation. As far as his actual feet go, I love, love, love this design. Um, I'm a big fan of a real broad base and a, and a smaller stem that goes down into the dirt. Um, I think this kind of design really sticks well in a lot of the gravel that we shoot in. Uh, so I'm happy to see uh, a change there. So yeah, so this is going to snap in. So we'll loosen that. That goes in. Same thing with this one. And I'm going to try something with this because I'm curious. So for transport, um, having these kinds of feet is not always... Uh, an advantage. You know, if you're throwing it in the back seat of a SUV or truck or something, you could potentially damage your seat. So you could either pull out the feet or I wonder if I can go upside down with these. So there's another way you could transport it. You could just flip it right upside down so that you have the feet. And then we're going to see how it collapses with the feet on. But it looks like I could transport it that way. The nubs would just be facing down, which is not a big deal in the back seat. So I'm just going to tighten those down so they don't fall out. This one I'm going to bring out just a little bit. But... Okay. And then folding purposes. Let's see if it folds up. Like putting it in the car. Um, so it's not horrible. Um, you definitely would want to raise that up for a carry handle, carry handle purposes, unless I'm missing something, but, um, I think you would want to lower. So if you're going to carry it, you would lower this, you would stick these on real quick. And then I think... This, if I'm not mistaken, can also double as a spotty scope holder. I think I've seen him do that or talk about doing it. So I'll have to play with it. I, I think there's some other designs for what this is capable of doing. And even if he didn't design it to do that, I could definitely see um, some modularity with this where you know you could bring it over and and hang a, a spotting scope or uh, and, you know, if you're shooting electronic targets, you could probably make an iPad holder for it or tablet holder. Uh, so I think there's definitely some possibilities for what this thing can do um, as far as the handle goes. And then when you're ready to transport it, you know, we're just going to screw this in. And you should be good to go. So let's see. So if we fold this out, we fold this one out. This one back out. And if you wanted to, you can actually go out past the lock. Well, I guess it is a second lock. Let's see here. So there's one lock here, and then it does look like so there actually is a second lock all the way out. So you can get even broader. So that is uh, some incredible spacing right there. That's pretty crazy. Uh, what was I just thinking? Oh, about the spotting scope head. Let me, I'm just curious. I don't think I have anything that would easily, man, if you had this over here, 
let's see. So I would be shooting like that. But for F class, I'm probably going to turn it around. Well, I'm going to have to see because typically I would shoot two posts in the front. So I would want to shoot it this way. Right? Sorry, I didn't lock these in. Okay. Um, so I would want to shoot it this way with one leg in front because that gives you more room to work with. And then if I wanted to, I could even move it over so that, let me see if there's another lock position anywhere. No? Okay. Um, but, you know, technically I could, I could swing this over and make a little more room for my joystick if I wanted to. So it's gonna, it, it, it opens up a ton of possibilities, which I think is super cool. Um, the levers would be on the back side. So I, I will have to make sure, you know, I'm going on some assumptions here just based on other rests that I have used uh, of his before and how he kind of thinks about things. But my gut says that you can swap this. So we'll have to see. I wonder if I can unscrew that and change it or something. Well, I'll have to play with it. But one way or another, I'll figure it out. And then as far as a spotting scope stand, well, I'll play with it a little bit. I get to shoot on it tonight. Like I said, I'm only going to have it for a few days. I'm, I'm hoping that I can keep it long enough to shoot a match that I'm going to this weekend. And I'll probably get some other people to try it out as well. Uh, if I can do that, then, then that'll be awesome. Then we'll get even more footage. What are those for? Hang on. we got one more thing that I haven't seen yet. There is something in the front here. What are these? So this is a little ground spike. So does this go all the way through? Just barely. All right, I'm feeling kind of stupid on this one, but I'll have to ask him. I'm trying to think. It's clearly a foot, but I'm trying to picture, I'm trying to picture how it would fit in. Let's see here. Like I said, you guys are seeing this for the first time like I am. Well, I can't imagine that's going to give enough room to do anything with, but maybe what you do is unscrew this. Let's see here. Does this fit? Okay. So if you want to run the front foot, I'm betting, you take this off so that it's not in your way, especially for bench rest shooting, this would be a huge deal. Um, for F class, it's still probably helpful, but it's not as critical, but it does help keep this thing out of your way when you're using a joystick. So let's try. Um, so this thing's gonna have to go all the way back up here here and then this goes on I just don't feel like that's going to give enough there's no way that's right all right hang on so it does look like there's enough room to go into it like this so let's see how that looks Yeah, there you go. Okay. So then you have a very minimal, you know, you don't have a giant stud sitting up here. Um, so that's actually not too bad. Like you could run that front and center and still have plenty of room. So let's see if I set this up for tonight, I'm just going to show you guys here. Okay. So I want to, I want to flip this thing around. So we're going to loosen that. Let's get this all the way up to the top. We're going to lock that down so it doesn't go anywhere. And now this will swivel around.
yeah, so everything still works the way it should. So this is still up is up and down is down. So down, up, okay. And then I bet you, let's see here. I bet you this lever just switches over. Ha <laughs> ha! So all you do is just loosen that screw and flip it to the other side. Okay, that's pretty clever thinking. All right, so now, now I've got that lever. I like that design. And then what's nice is this lets you move the levers wherever you want for tightening purposes. You know, if you want them to be, you know, more, more up, more down, whatever the case is. Let's see, so there's that. So in this case, I want to change this. So I want it to be over here a little bit and, and again when I get mine I can mess with it but I do get to do pretty much whatever I want with this one for now so I don't mind moving stuff around and seeing how it fits right. so there we go Oh yeah, so there we go. We've got the we've got it right where I want it, and then we've got this one over here. I'm going to move that one just a little bit. All right, so there we go. So this is how I'm going to want to run it in this configuration. That still locks up. This one still locks that one up. And then I can mess with the rest of it. So this one here, I just want to loosen. I'm going to upside down it. That's going to that's going to be in there so it protects the car. That'll be there and then we're just going to pull this up a little bit. that I will have to play with how to possibly mount optics on here but in the meantime that is your carry handle so it's easy to get in and out to the line your car whatever you need and then you do have the built-in handle still or the built-in handle holder I should say or so there's that and then you can just carry the whole unit uh, wait take a look real quick I know sort of what's been advertised around somewhere between 17 and 20 pounds is what I've been told it's going to be. So this is on my highly unofficial scale, 19.3. And that's with the carry handle, everything. If I was super conscious about weight and I didn't travel with the handle for some reason, um, then I'm at 17. And if I only took this handle and a dealt with elevation by hand you're at 18 and then I'm guessing this probably isn't too much more probably right about 19 just under 19 well, close enough yeah 18 and a half so that gets you right in there um, that's with the f-class feet on it I am also curious if we pull the F-Class feet off of it. 
how much weight do we save here? So that takes you down to 16 plus the handles. So 17 with just the handles. So it looks like there's different ways you could kind of configure this to make it your own. Um, you know, sometimes every pound counts, sometimes it doesn't. But you can definitely play around with it a little bit. Uh, you'll probably take another six ounces off with that front. So anyway, there is your first sneak peek. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and post this video, uh, but my goal is to get more footage over the next three or four days uh, with hopefully getting this in the hands of a couple different people at a match and uh, you know, see what their impressions are. But I gotta tell you, it is a, um, it, it is pretty incredible uh, in terms of everything he's thought of on this. So I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I think that there are going to be a lot of people. I, I, I don't know exactly at what point he's going to stop making the Neo and only making the Neo X, but I know he has said it won't be too long before this is all that's available uh, and you won't be able to get a regular Neo. There is a little bit more price tag on it. I can't remember. Um, I don't want to get quoted on it, but I, I, somewhere between 15, 16, 1700, somewhere in there. I think 1600 is the number I heard but I don't know for sure, uh, and I don't know what's going to be finished. So anyway, he's still taking some feedback on this. There's a couple of these out in the wild right now that are being tested, and then the final production will start before the end of the year, uh, hopefully sooner than that, but uh, I know by the end of the year for sure, he said. So anyway, there is your first sneak peek at a Neo X. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have questions, hit me up below. I can always contact him if it's something I didn't cover and you want to know. And uh, we'll get you another video here as soon as I can with this actually on the range doing some damage.